Welcome back to part three of chapter one in the Progressive Web Apps for Beginner series. Our topic today is what are web capabilities and native integrations. Today here with me again is our one and only Patrick. Hey everyone. <laughs> so Patrick, early in the series, you know, we talked about Progressive Web Apps and how we leverage yeah. to do some pretty um, advanced stuff. Let's talk more about advanced capabilities. Remind us what they are again. Yeah. I think it helps to think about them in terms of two groups. One, there's the capabilities that belong to the web group, right? So PWAs are based on web technologies, and as such, they can use a ton of features that belong to the web platform. So when you make a website, you can use certain APIs and features, and PWAs can use those same APIs and features. And then the second group is uh, a slightly different group where that has a lot of features and APIs as well that only PWS can use. P websites won't be able to use those features. And they are the ones that will make your progressive web app even more advanced and even more integrated into the operating system. Let's start with the first one that you mentioned, uh, two of them. Let's start with the first category, which is web capabilities. I think it helps to think about the web in terms of this platform, fantastic platform that's been invented, you know, many years ago. And I think over the past 20 years or so, it's been evolving really, really fast. Um, and many features have been invented, specified, you know, standardized, implemented in web browsers. Uh, and that means that CSS, HTML and JavaScript, which are the languages of the web, are way more featureful now than they used to be in the past, right? Um, Depending on what you want to do, there's probably a browser API that you can use to make your life easier. So actually, let me give you a few examples to make it a, a little bit easier to understand. Um, one area of web uh, of the web platform is UI, right? The design part. Uh, not very long ago, if you wanted to make an interesting layout for your website or for your app, you had to rely on some ugly tricks, uh, so to speak. Like if you wanted to make something interesting, you want like you had to use essentially a table or maybe floated elements. And those weren't really easy to use and it couldn't be used to do everything, right? But the thing is that those were the only things we had at the time. Nowadays, you can do things like CSS Flexbox, CSS Grid, CSS Multi-Column, um, container queries, much more. Like there's many, many more things in CSS to help you do pretty much any design you want and any uh, layout that you want. Um, for example, you know, you can adapt your uh, application code so that on a big tablet or on a big monitor, it'll be in a certain shape. And then when you when your app is loaded on a smaller phone, the layout can be completely different just using the same CSS code base. Right. Um, another thing that I think is really interesting as well is media, because uh, you know, on the web, you can do text, you can do images, you can do movies, you know, people know that this is something that's possible, but you can do way more than this. Uh, one API that I like to play with often is the web audio API, and it actually allows you to do things like manipulate audio and even generate sound, uh, sound directly from, from the browser. Um, you can even hook up to um, instruments by using web MIDI. Uh, you can generate and you know create interesting 2D or 3D graphics using WebGL and Canvas. So there's really a lot of things you can do uh, if your app uh, wants to do some media uh, things. Um, another area is hardware. Uh, the web can do things like Bluetooth, USB, NFC. Um, so that means you could create an app that really interfaces with other devices around the device where your app is installed. Um, so there's really a lot of things you can do there. There's other APIs as well. Um, one of them that I have in mind right now is Web Payment, which allows your application to process payment. If you're wanting to do like a store app, for example, it can process payment really safely and in a way that people can really much more uh, easily trust because it's embedded in their browser, in their system. Uh, another one is Web Authentication which allows you to use the um, like Windows Hello, you know, the face recognition or the iOS, um, you know, the fingerprint recognition. So you can use those things to log the user into your app in a much more 
uh, secure way and much more you know trusted way by the user. So those are a lot of things that you can do on the web today using these uh, you know advanced capabilities. Super cool. What about the the second category that you mentioned? Um, you know the integrations into the operating system where simple websites can't do. What about those? Yeah. So. That's also one of the most important as well. Uh, if you want to make a great PWA, you, you need to start by making it a great web experience using everything that I said before, uh, you know, depending on the use case, of course. But if you really want to make it like your app belongs on the device, you should look into the second category. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because when somebody installs an app, they are not really like they have different expectations. They know what a website is. They have expectations of how websites work and are you know, displayed to users. Right. But when you install an app, it's, it, the set of expectations is really different. And so that's why that group is really important. One thing your app can do is manage files or handle files, really. You know, for example, if you have a, an application on your computer right now that manipulates images, if you double click on an image on a, in a folder, you sort of expect that the app will open, right? And a website just can't do that, but a PWA can do this. It can do this by using something called file handlers. Uh, with this, you can define which types of files you want your app to handle, and then the application, whenever it's installed, will be registered as a handler for these types of files, and, and then it'll work just like any normal app. Um, another thing you can do with files is you can actually use an API called File System Access API to store changes to the file. So imagine the workflow where you double click on a file on the desktop, your app opens up, then you make changes to the file. Um, maybe it's an image and you like draw on the image or whatever, and then you click save and the same file gets saved back to disk. This seems very simple, you know, if you know what a real app can do, but uh, because progressive web apps come from the web, it really is a big deal that progressive web apps are able to do this now. So that's one example. Uh, another one is uh, sharing, and we talked about it quickly in the previous video, I think, yep. where progressive web apps can actually interface with the operating system share dialog, uh, which means that they can share content to other application and they can receive content from other applications. Um, and then another, like maybe this one is a little bit more subtle, but it actually makes a big difference um, in how users will experience your app. Uh, badges, you can actually call an API called navigator.setAppBadge. So really simple function, but it plays a big role because with that you can display this little red you know, badge on top of the app icon on your mobile phone or your desktop you know, operating system to attract user attention to the app and re-engage the user uh, within the app if you have something new to read, for example. Um, another one, and I can keep going, like there's so many of them, but another one is uh, the ability to handle links and protocols. I think one way to understand this is um, if, if uh, somebody has already sent you a link to a Spotify song or to a Teams channel or a Slack channel, you know that when you click on that link, uh, the link doesn't open in the browser, right? Typically, when you click on a link, the web browser opens up and you go to that site. But for these special links, the app opens up instead. And that's a great capability that real apps can you know, have access to. And progressive web apps can also do this as well. You can register to be a handler to a custom protocol and therefore you know, handle those uh, particular links. This is my um, favorite. Yeah. And, <laughs> And so this one, yeah, th this one I really love. Um, it has a weird name. It's called Window Controls Overlay. Um, but it really, like it makes a 30 pixels difference between a PWA um, that has the feature and a PWA that doesn't. So it's really minor. But when you think of it, it's actually pretty a pretty big deal. So what that means is that your progressive web app will have access to the full surface area of the window that it's currently displayed in, right? You, so there won't be a system uh, default looking title bar at the top. You have access to the entire surface area, except the maximize, minimize, and close buttons. That's normal. Like those are system critical things. But for the rest, you have access to everything and you can display your own logo, your own menu your own title bar, uh, you know, anything you can think of. 
you know, the canvas is blank and it's for you to, um, to play with, essentially. Um, and finally, this is actually very hot of the press because uh, it's not even usable right now. Uh, it's coming in Windows very soon and that's widgets. Uh, if you've, you know, widgets, they're all over the place. Um, mobile devices have them, Windows, we have a widget board as well. If you uh, open it up from the left side of your computer, uh, this, you know, there's one on Mac, there's one on Linux. So um, there's these little things that will show you the weather forecast or the stock market, you know, or your meetings for the day, stuff like that. And so far, they've been pretty restrained into what can go there. Uh, but we're opening it up to PWAs. So very, very soon, you'll be able to uh, present your own little widgets that go with your app um, and do, you know, um, interesting things on the side. For example, I was building a music player app recently and uh, what I did is I created a little widget to go next and previous and just show you the artwork of the album that's playing. Super cool. Um, and there were a lot of capabilities that you were talking about. And I know that there's more coming uh, as we speak, right? Like uh, yep. with all these big companies, our partners all behind this initiative. Um, so where can I, where do I go to keep track of these new capabilities? Yeah, there's this really like it can be overwhelming. There's there's a lot of them. Um, a lot of the APIs that we talked about now actually come from a project that's called Fugu, F-U-G-U. -U. It's a cross company project uh, and their goal is to bridge the gap between native and the web or web and native, really. Um, they have a pretty handy web page where you can keep track of all of the APIs that they're working on. Uh, fugu-tracker.web.app and like one of the APIs that they've been working on, for example, is web Bluetooth. So if you're interested in interfacing your app with some Bluetooth devices, then Fugu is the project that had that has been working on it and you can find out more on their website. And so you can keep track of all of the new APIs there. Web.dev is also an amazing place if you want to go and um, find out about new features. Uh, if you go to the blog, for example, web.dev slash blog, you'll see new articles come up and they'll usually be about new capabilities that you know might be interesting to you. Um, they also have a really good learning section, web.dev slash learn slash PWA to learn more about PWA. And we also at Microsoft have um, some great documentation about this um, at learn.microsoft.com slash Microsoft Edge slash progressive web apps. Super cool. Lots of resources to look at. And as usual, here are some of the resources that we recommend you to go um, check out on your own if you want to explore more about progressive web apps. Uh, thank you again, Patrick, for today's session where we talked about advanced capabilities and native integrations. Um, in the next video, we're, we are going to show you some real world examples and kind of inspire you to um, build your own progressive web apps. Thanks, you all. See you in the next one.